Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name's Emma Fave, and it is another dreary and miserable day outside and I need something that is gonna lift me up like a beautiful bright floral bouquet because one, I love painting flowers and I feel like I haven't really done that in a while and two, I need something bright to look forward to like a spring floral bouquet. So that's what we're doing. So let's just jump in and get started. Okay, friends, you know what I feel like I haven't painted very much in the last little while? Flowers, floral bouquets, just I'm tired of winter. I want spring to come. I want to paint bright and colorful flowers. I feel like I haven't just let go and painted in a while. So that is what I'm going to do today. And I have this book called Flower Color Theory, which is an extension of the Flower Color Guide book, which I've done in my previous videos. And this one is more focused on colors going together in bouquets, analogous uh, palettes, accent colors. Um, it's very nice. I don't find a ton of inspiration in this one. Um, there's some that look a little funky to me. That's kind of pretty. Um, some are a bit too out there, but there are some really great references just for color palettes. And I stumbled across this one, which is very bright and sunny, and that is what I need today. And my plan is to not paint this exactly. Um, I just kind of want to take elements from it, the color palette, some of the types of flowers, some placements, but not to, the goal isn't to paint it exactly. So what I'm going to do is I am going to place this where I can see it and I can reference it and I am going to have fun in my sketchbook which I haven't used in a long time. This is one of my etcher sketchbooks which I am strictly doing florals in uh, mostly from the flower color guide. We'll actually go through it a bit because I haven't even seen it in a while. Um, I always skip the first page just because I, I don't know why I never want to paint on the first page or two pages of apparently. Um, and these are all from the flower color guide. So I think there's a YouTube video on this one, maybe even that one. Not all of them are YouTube videos, but some of them are. And I just, these ones were done with uh, Jillian Boone from Brush Movement. Uh, she did YouTube videos on these and we kind of collaborated together to do a video together, which was a lot of fun. Um, so you can check those out. We did this video together, all pink flowers, which were a lot of fun from the flower, co flower color guide. Oh, this is one of her red flowers, some yellow flowers. I love doing these daffodils. This was so much fun. I can't remember, I don't think I, I filmed this, but that was a lot of fun to do. Some mimosa. These blue flowers were beautiful. I love how this one turned out. Just the contrast of the dark blue and the light blue with a little bit of lavender in there. So fun. Definitely check out her channel because this is where a lot of these are from. Um, I did some asters and then I did this like a couple months ago, I filmed it and guess what? I deleted it. I'm so mad. So mad because this was a video and then it got deleted. So I never, I never finished it or I never put a video out and I don't really want to do it again. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you'd actually like a video on this. Oh, what a pain in the butt. Gotta love when you accidentally delete things. And then I think I'm going to kind of like how this is in the middle of the page. Because this opens kind of flat, I might just do it over both pages here, which will be a bit of a challenge, but fun. So I'm gonna be in my Etcher Lab cold press watercolor sketchbook. I have my Paul Rubens paints here, which I think I'm gonna use. And then I am gonna switch in between a bunch of different brushes, to be honest. I have a new brush line with Craftimo coming out where some of these really cool um, new brush shapes are gonna be coming out, like this flat, this long flat brush. Why is there paint on my hand? Why isn't there paint on my hand? There's always paint on my hand. I touch wet paint somewhere. Um, so I might be using this. Maybe I'll use my smaller one, maybe a dagger, maybe round. I don't actually know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna play around, uh, explain as I go, and just have fun today. Today is about taking the pressure off creating specific content of where I know where I'm going with it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna have fun and paint what I love, which is flowers. So I'm just gonna open it like this and we're gonna start. So let me grab my paints, my flower color guide. I'm not gonna have it in frame the whole time just because 
uh, it's too much to put in frame. You just can't fit it. But I am going to kind of maybe pop it in and out just to kind of talk to you about my thought process of it all. Um, so just looking at it to start, when I'm painting kind of from a reference photo, I want to pick out some like hero flowers, some big flowers. I usually work from big flowers to little flowers. So I see this big kind of pink. No, that's a rose. Um, these anemones working in threes, one, two, three. Uh, kind of, this kind of shows my way of how I go through composition for my flowers. I tend to work in threes, usually in like a triangular pattern. Um, but here's like one, two, three anemones. Kind of not too much of a triangle. But then these roses, one, two, three. There's a triangle there. Um, yellow, kind of just doing the same kind of zigzag that the anemones are doing and then little fillers. I don't know if I'm going to be, I don't think I'm going to be painting the vase, but I'm going to start, I think, with the roses and then the anemones, just going from the biggest flowers to the smallest flowers. So let me put that there and let's begin. So for my roses, I'm going to try and use my dagger brush. I don't really use dagger brushes a lot for roses. Um, so today's going to be a lot about playing and experimenting and just having fun. I'm just going to wet up my palette. And let's give it a go. So I'm going to grab some pink and I'm going to grab some yellow because it's kind of like a, a peachy pink, like a corally color. I'm going to take some of that color off. And these aren't like traditional roses, or at least that one, big one isn't. And I'm just going to kind of do some squiggles around. And then I'm just going to start doing these bigger petals. Like that. Just using the back end of the curve of this brush to kind of guide. A little bit more pink in here, I think. I'm just going to do some bigger, fluffier petals, and then it's going to get a little bit flatter. Again, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself for it to be perfect. Just really twisting the brush, kind of seeing the marks it can make. And I'm really, what I'm doing is I'm kind of putting the tip down of my brush and I'm just moving the back around to get these, these shapes. A little bit flatter around the edges, like so. And then I'm going to grab just some more straight pink and just kind of make it a little bit darker towards the center. Just let it bleed. That kind of looks cool. I like it. I like it. And again, this is very loose. This isn't realism or anything like I ever do realism. Okay, and then I'm going to do another pink rose that's kind of up here. So it's on a different angle. So I'm just going to kind of do these little just tinier petals. bit more pink just so I can vary the color within it. it doesn't all have to be one color just creating these little petal shapes they're a little bit lighter towards the edges and it's more of a side view that you're seeing of this rose but I don't feel like I need to do a complete side view there's a bit of blooms happening over here that I want to kind of just re-wet and even out. There we go. Blooms happen when there's too much water in one area, hitting another area that doesn't have as much water, and then the water kind of pushes the pigment, which is totally fine. It happens. You can just kind of go back over it if you want. I don't want to make it too crazy. There. Okay. There's that rose, and then I'm going to do just a little hint of another one over here. Just want to have fun with this. Just kind of doing these clusters of petals. Like 
like that. And then just a bit more color towards the center. Like so. Okay, so there are my three roses. Now I want to move on to the anemones. I'm going to grab my flat brush and I'm going to mix up some purple. And I'm going to grab some blue. I want more of like a lavendery kind of blue. And I'm just going to take off some of that pigment. And then I'm going to place my anemones. So there's one kind of over here that's like a side view. There's one up here. One over here. Now I'm not doing it exactly like the photo. I kind of want to put one in the middle, to be honest, instead. So let's do that because that's what I want to do. <laughs> okay, and I'm going kind of on an angle with this brush. Like that. I'm just creating these petal shapes going right over the middle. Nice and light. And then they're a bit shorter on this side because it's a bit of a side view. Like that. It's kind of hard painting over the center, but I'm doing it. There's that. And then I want to do one that's a bit more like side view. I'm going to have it up here. So the shorter petals are on this side. Like that. And then I'm going to do a really light one back here. Because there's a really light one in the photo. So it's not going to be too in focus. that and then maybe one more just like a peak of one over here For some reason this etcher sketchbook is not it feels different maybe I've just been painting on other paper too long but it's pooling more than it usually does I feel like or maybe my other paper maybe I'll just do like a hint of one back here just to kind of have it move its way through the bouquet Just a little, like so. And then I might grab a bit more purple. And just kind of tap it towards the center. Just for a little bit of darkness in there. I think I'll do some shading on it after. Okay. And then the other major color that I see is yellow in this bouquet. So I'm going to grab some yellow. Let's try the smaller flat brush just for fun. <laughs> so I'm going to grab this yellow or actually like a cooler yellow. Mm, what about my, I forget what color yellow this is. It's like a softer yellow. Let's try that. And I'm going to place one, two, three, I think. Yeah. And I'm just going to do these little kind of row shapes. I'm just using the corner of this brush to kind of do these little curves going around. And then I'm going to wash off some of that color. Do it really, really light towards the outer bit. Make it nice and soft. Then I might go back in. Just grab a little of like orangey yellow or just a bit of orange just to make it a little bit darker in the center. Like that. Then I'm going to do another one over here. Just using the corner of this brush. And then washing it off to get really light and soft petals <clears throat> as we go around. And then a bit of my orange again. Just 
just to the center like that. A little bit more over here. And then I want to do one right here too. So far I'm loving the color palette. <laughs> it's so fresh and bright and just cheery. Taking some of that color off. Grab some of my orange. Like so. Okay, so we have our main flowers, and now I want to start working on some of the smaller fillers. So I see some little bits of smaller purple and pink. Um, I'm trying to see what they might be. So the, in this is rose, anemone, sweet peas, or these ones. Hyacinth are these little purple. Um, straw flower. I wonder if it's these pink ones. Fringe lavender, which it might be those and Mediterranean Heather. No idea, but either way, they look cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start like placing in some sweet peas and then maybe some of these smaller ones like the hyacinth and stuff. So let's, let's give it a try. And then we'll also add some greenery in there. I feel like it could use some greenery. So let's do the sweet peas. I'm gonna use, again, this half inch or quarter inch flat. And I want it to be a little bit softer of a pink just really soft and I'm going to do some of the sweet peas over here and I'm just going to kind of do these I'm trying to think like butterfly wings almost really loose there's like a petal and then another petal that's kind of how I think of sweet peas little butterfly wings like that and then maybe a third Again, I like to work in threes like that. And before they dry, I want to add a little bit of green. Um, for a stem, so I'm just using the tip of this and I'm just going to connect the stems because I want a little bit of bleeding into these uh, sweet peas. Okay, and then I'm going to do some more sweet peas. I think I'm going to have them up here and then down here. So just little kind of butterfly wings. Nice and light in color. And then you can always add like a little bit more pink. Or even like orange. Just kind of toss it in there. Let it pop. Then our green again, just for the little bit of the bleed. Like that. Cute. Okay. And then a little bit more just peeking up here, I think. And your bouquets don't have to be round. Like you can see this one's kind of spread out, right? Like it doesn't have to be a round bouquet. It can be if that's the kind of um, shape you're going for. Like I know if you're painting like a wedding bouquet and they have a bit more of a round one, go for it. But just remember, it doesn't always have to be like a rounded bouquet. And a little bit of our green. Okay, so there's that. And then I wanna do some of the hyacinth, which are the darker purples. So I'm gonna grab some purple. I'm gonna grab that same blue again. I'm just gonna make it darker. And I'm just gonna do like little, I don't know. Hyacinth are like these like little flowers that have like four kind of petals like folded over. But I don't wanna do too much 
to them. So I'm just doing these kind of like folded, like almost like a V shape. Kind of clustered together. I'm just kind of going back and forth from like darker values and lighter values. It's just kind of like a cluster. I might grab a little bit of green, just toss it throughout, little tiny lines. This isn't even what it looks like in the photo, I'm just kind of playing. <laughs> and then I'm going to bring some maybe up here too. Just these little kind of petal shapes that are all kind of clustered together. Changing up the value, so lighter values, darker values, just adding a bit more water to your brush so it's a bit lighter. Like that. Okay, and then again, I might add some right here. Again, my rule of three. Just a little. See, one, two, three. Okay. And then I want some more like elongated pieces. So those like pink ones that are kind of just, I'm imagining a stem and I'm just kind of doing these shapes nice and bright. giving some space in between and then it's kind of coming to a point like that. I'm going to grab a little bit of green so I can create the stem within it. Just kind of go through like that. Maybe, hmm. I'm going to do two here, I think. This one can kind of be going behind the sweet pea a bit. And then our green. Okay, so there's those pink ones, and then I'm going to do one more pink, kind of just balancing it over here. Like that. A little bit of green. Okay. Now I'm going to do some of the stems for the flowers and then we'll like pop in some greenery, even though there's not a ton of greenery within this, uh, like the actual piece. I just wanna, I like greenery, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some stems here, a little bit of the greenery underneath some of these yellow roses. Have stems for the anemones. All kind of going back to the center area. Which kind of looks a little odd, I know. 
we will fix it. You can even create little little flowers in between if it looks like it needs a little something just to kind of actually I want more pink. Fill an area. It doesn't even have to be like a real flower. It can just look like there's flowers in behind. If it looks too bare, but you don't want to add the green. Just adding some fullness in there. Like they can be tiny little flowers of something like that. Maybe even a little bit of a darker green in there. Do I want big? And we're going to do the anemones too. Keep that in mind, <clears throat> like the center of them, because they're looking a little flat. I'm trying to think of how I would do some greenery. Just little bits, I think. Just not even real like leaf shapes. Just kind of tapping my brush. around like that, just filling it up and then I'm going to wash off my brush a bit and just do some lighter ones so we have a range of values. And I'm just kind of doing these really rough little tiny leaf shapes. And again, washing it off, doing some really light washes. You can always do like tiny little sprigs of greenery if you like. You never have to stick just to whatever the uh, photo looks like. You can go off on your own, take inspiration. I don't know. Okay, now I want to do, I'm going to take my round brush, my size 10, and we're going to finish off with these anemones because they're looking a little flat. Okay, so I'm just going to darken some of the petals, like do some line, line work on them just to give them a bit more structure like that you see that kind of doing these lines in between the petals and coming from the center just to look like there's some shading in there might even go or do like a second round after it's dry with a little bit of a darker value than this that and then once we add the centers they're gonna like really pop so maybe a bit more blue a bit more purple that's a lot of purple hold on and just like do I want to do it this dark I don't know maybe not that dark I don't know. Okay. Now I want to do the centers, which is a really dark, kind of almost like a navy or Payne's gray or like, sorry, indigo or Payne's gray. And I'm just going to do these little like dotted domes for the center. So 
so it's like a bit more raised and circular on one side and then it's just a bit flatter on the other side it gives that side view and I'm not filling it in completely then I'm just going to create little tiny dots with a bit of space around it like that like that and then I'm going to grab my liner brush which is where where did I put it <laughs> Here I have one here and I'm just going to drag tiny little lines from the dots to the center. Like that, and see how that just helps it pop a bit more. I feel like it could use a bit more lines down the center, but that's okay. And then I think that's pretty good, but if you want to add any more, like just to the center of some of those roses to make them pop a bit more, or just like another layer just to give it a bit more structure, you can. It's up to you and kind of how you want the vibe of your painting to go. I'm just playing and trying to make it a little bit more sharper during the towards the center. Eh, I don't know if that was good or bad. <laughs> I don't know, but it's always worth a try. But I think that for the most part, that's about it. You know, you can keep going, keep playing, adding a little bit of darker green in there to the base of some of these. Just have fun and let go and paint some flowers. That's That was my goal today and I did it. And you know what? It's super bright and fun and this is exactly what I needed to do to kind of cheer me up and make me feel better about painting. So there we go. There is our bouquet. Similar, not exact with the placement, but similar kind of vibes. And there we go. There is our floral painting. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye.